What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Crying in Baseball Baseball Podcast. I am your host, Logan Mealy, joined once again by Ashton Youngfeld. Ashton, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you, Logan? I am doing good. We, we woke up with some big Yankee news. We're going to bed with some big Yankee news. Let's talk about that. So, DJ gets signed, six years, $90 million. First reactions. Let me hear them. My, my first reactions were that that's kind of dirt cheap for what he's worth, right? Oh, yeah. But then you realize he's kind of older, right? And and then it's a six-year contract. So although it'll be cheap for now, but it, it, if he starts to hit a decline around year four or five, you're paying him a lot of money to probably just be a bench bat. Um, but obviously, you, you do have to look at what they're getting now. They're, they're getting the, what was their best hitter last year, one of the best hitters in the AL um, at – a very not high price and, and I thought a lot of people I think a lot of people thought he was going to get a, around that hundred million dollar range but on maybe four or five years so I think per year it's obviously a great deal for the Yankees but I, I'm not a big fan of how long the deal is yeah I'd agree with that too I, I feel like I feel like the deal I I have a lot to say on this contract and I'm going to start with what you ended off with was how long it is and yeah I, I do think it's too long i think six years is too long for was he 32 oh uh, yeah yeah I, I think six years is too long for that um but an ex- an example that makes me mad that he got the price for that amount of years josh donaldson signs a four-year contract worth 92 million dollars with a club option for 2024 um with the minnesota twins he is 32 when he signs that contract, if I remember correctly. That is insane that he plays two less years than LeMayhew and gets paid $2 million more. And they are different players. I understand that Donaldson is more power-oriented. He has an MVP under his belt. He has lots and lots of playoff experience. But you know what? LeMayhew is finishing the MVP voting, the, the top five, a multitude of times and you know he i i just think it's i have nothing against the donaldson deal i just want lemayhew's deal to be equal to it it's it's insane to me that he is not getting what he deserves i i was really expecting a a you know like a four year 108 million dollar contract i'm not sure why 108 was the number that popped in my mind but i i i really think that you know 25 26 million a year is really where he should be and i think it's just insane that he doesn't get that he gets a three million dollar raise hypothetically a three million dollar raise and that's that's just that's insane to me he he deserves more money and less years Uh, i do have like kind of a quick rebuttal of that oh yeah yeah, Uh, in, in terms of hitters and baseball power is the last thing that goes so having a guy like Donaldson for a bit longer isn't isn't as hurtful to a team as potentially having like Lemayhew for longer, That's but very true. that the fact that like like you said Donaldson gets is playing two less years but gets two million dollars more is a bit weird, but it just shows, yeah it shows where the market is right now, and that could just this could just have to do with the fact that Lemayhew wanted to stay with the Yankees and this is the best offer he was going to get from them. But but at the same time, you'd feel you still feel like the Yankees should have offered him a little more. Oh yeah, I, I think you really should have. Um, now yeah, like that's that's kind of insane to me that you know you know he he wants to save New York. I get that. Um, so a six year, ninety million dollar contract. But um, the Blue Jays offered him, according to uh, John Heyman, four years, seventy eight million. Um, that's it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's a higher AAV for him. And I really think that it's kind of that, that he obviously wanted to stay in New York, but you know, he, he's, he, he deserves in my mind, he's one of the best players in baseball and he deserves so much more. And, you know, in uh, 2019, he signed a two-year, $24 million contract. 
He got paid $12 million, $12 million a year. He now gets paid fifteen. That's He deserves so much more than that. And I'm just mad about that to begin with. But um, it, I think the price he paid for staying with the Yankees literally and figuratively was too high. Maybe he just absolutely loved New York and knew that they were going to play they, that they were, you know, going to compete for the World Series and all that stuff. And, you know, the Blue Jays were kind of a risk. But, I mean, I I don't know. I just find that low price just disheartening for the market. Yeah, uh, kind of to add on to that a little bit. And I think one of the reasons he might love New York so much is is that ballpark. How sh- like yeah. You keep saying, oh, yeah. like, how short the fences are. And I think he might even think that has to do with how successful of a hitter he's been over these past two years. So I, yeah. I think he I think he might just be comfortable uh, in New York and in the I mean, I mean he hit ten home runs in sixty in uh, sixty games this year. Yeah, and then you look in twenty seventeen when he was an All Star, he had eight home runs in a hundred and fifty game or in hundred and fifty five games. Well, I I want to correct myself real quick. He only played fifty games and hit ten home runs. So that's that that he he's even better. But yeah, like you were saying, you know, he plays in Colorado and. He's not. It's ironic he plays in Colorado, not really hitting for pop, but you know, go, goes to New York. I mean, that's that's good. I mean, that's good for him. Like you know, we, he he found where he succeeds. Yeah, and and that's obviously, like I said, one of the reasons I think he wanted to stay there. And I know some people are going to say, "Oh, if you want to stay in New York, then go to the Mets." He's comfortable with that team, that clubhouse management. So it, it yeah, it makes sense for him to stay. It. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I, I thought he should have gotten more money for another reason too. He had the highest batting average in the American league. He won the batting title and it's just, I, I, I I don't know why I'm so defensive of DJ here. I, I really don't know why, but. I just think that he should get paid so much more for being the reigning batting champ for having an average of a home run every five games. What was that like 1.25 home runs a week or something? I'm not good at math. I don't don't know the exact number, but I mean, I just think he deserves more than a $3 million raise for the production he's giving. Yeah. And and once again, I'd probably say that with how weird the market is right now, I think it was, uh, more important for him to get a longer contract than uh, that's very true. You're than, right. Like more money, so I, I think I think he kind of just wanted to settle down in New York. Obviously, they're going to be competitive for probably as long as he's there because the Yankees are always competitive. Yeah, and uh, you know if, if he wanted to stay in New York, good for him. Um, I, I'm not going to be mad at the guy for taking less money to be loyal to like a team that's helped him, but. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it definitely. There was obviously more money on the table in terms of AAV, but maybe not necessarily more money in total. So I think he wanted to take that 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 guaranteed money with the Yankees for six years, and maybe kind of almost taking a chance on himself to go to Toronto for four years. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like at this point in his career, he wants a ring. And I feel like he kind of knew he wasn't going to get that in Toronto because Toronto is an up and coming team. They might make the play. The, the American League this year is going to be extremely competitive for the wild card slots. But, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I think he knew that the Blue Jays aren't going to flip that switch probably within the next two years. And four years is just too long of a, too long of a risk yeah, and, to take. And I know we're kind of on the Yankees. Um, what you just cut out, Ash? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to switch to the Blue Jays for one second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because uh, they've been offering big contracts to all of these guys. Oh, yeah. But it is a bit rare for Toronto to get big American free agents. Like you see the free agents that, that they usually get, they're international guys, and, and that's because there's a, there's yeah. a lot that goes in to moving to a different country. Uh, for, for especially for the American players, the international players are used to it. They've done it, but the American players, it, it kind of makes more sense for them to stay in the country. So a guy like George Springer and DJ LeMay- LeMahieu, who they've offered big contracts to, 
uh, more money than uh, the, well, obviously with DJ, they offered him more AAV than the Yankees did. Um, but it, it's difficult to move to Canada, especially during COVID. So I think these guys are just yeah. more comfortable staying in the United States. Yeah, you know that 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 is like totally respectable, and you know. You understand it. You gotta do what's easiest for yourself. But yeah, you know it's. I'm not sure. I feel like Lemayhew Le- Le- got shorted on this, and I'm rooting for the Blue Jays, and they, they, they aren't getting anything. Oh. All right. What is that? Uh, I was just gonna ask if you wanted to move on to uh, Corey Kluber. I would love to move on to Corey Kluber. Now, I, as you heard previously. I was a big fan of the White Sox signing Kluber to get a phenomenal four-man rotation. Obviously, the Sox aren't aren't in desperate need for it, but the Yankees were. The Yankees did not have a good pitching staff going into 2021 as of right now. They they had Garrett Cole, and that was it. They, Domingo Herman, maybe. Um, you know, I, I, they might sign back uh, James Paxton. Uh, I think he's a they still have Luis but, Severino. Yeah, it's like a Luis Severino, but he seems to always be yeah. injured. But um, I mean, it's I I I I love this move for the Yankees. I I hate that the White Sox didn't pick him up, but I love this move for the Yankees to to give them you know one year of Corey Kluber, you know possibly more see see how good he is, but you know you you get you get this one year of Kluber. He's a veteran playoff pitcher, pitched in the 2016 World Series. He knows what's up. And a great number two behind Garrett Cole. Yeah, and I think the Yankees having, you know, kind of struggling with injuries and injuries in that staff, uh, like Severino, yeah. and then the Herman situation is what kind of led to this Kluber signing. And it's perfect for Kluber taking a one year contract with a competitive team to try to kind of get his stock back up. Uh, obviously, there mm-hmm. were a ton of teams interested, and he just really has not pitched much in these last two seasons. But when it, the, the however many seasons, five seasons prior, he he was one of the best pitchers in baseball. Oh yeah, he uh, is he a two time Cy Young award? Yep. Yeah, he's two time Cy Young award winner, three time All Star, one time ERA title. This this is one of the greatest pitchers of a generation. Yeah, that might be pushing a little bit, but uh, he he is a solid a solid pitcher who has proven his worth before and now he needs to do it yeah, again. Kind of, I, I know this is kind of off topic, but kind of reverting back to a previous topic we talked about, uh, obviously the foreign substance stuff coming out about Kluber didn't affect his stock at all. So uh, yeah. I think that, that shows how not serious of a situation the substance stuff is that mm-hmm. the Yankees were going to just give him $11 million to, uh, to come pitch. Um so I, I want I don't know if that necessarily affects like the other free agent pitchers that were involved in that like maybe a Tyler Chatwood or um, Edwin Jackson but uh, yeah sorry I just wanted to put that in oh no a hundred percent um yeah I feel like that that kind of gives a signal to everybody that yeah this is happening and there's nothing we can really do about it uh which you know kind of sucks because you know. You you want you want to hope that what they're doing isn't entirely, you know, there, but you know it isn't. Which, I mean, it kind of sucks to think about, but you know, I can't can't get too hung up on that. But do do you think that uh, for me personally, I had the Yankees at the top of the division this entire time? But does this further solid like the the re-signing of DJ, the um. The signing of Kluber, does this automatically push the Blue Jays to a wild card spot for you? Um, so honestly, I think yes, because the the problem with the Yankees these past couple of years hasn't been talent; it's been injuries, and yet they've still yeah. been able to succeed with guys like Gio Urshela stepping up. So, uh, the problem has been like not the position players stepping up for injuries; it's been the pitchers especially starters stepping up for injury. So a guy like, yeah, a guy like Kluber, um, like you said, playoff experience uh, is going to be great for them. Uh, I didn't see. Yeah. I kind of agree with you. I didn't really see the blue Jays being the winners of that, div- that of that division, 
barring them signing I like LeMahieu and Springer. Um or had trading for Lindor. They they were one of the finalists. Yeah, so um I think this kind of further solidifies the Yankees as that, as that top team. Um and, and you know the Blue Jays could very well still sign George Springer, but even if they do, yeah. I'm still gonna take the Yankees over them. Yeah, now um with Kluber Obviously, the Indians trade him to the Rangers last off season. How do you think the Rangers feel about this? I mean, they 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 let him walk and all that stuff, but um, I don't my my computer just froze. Uh, I, so I can't pull up the exact trade details of the Kluber to the Rangers deal. But you know, what does does do you think that Kluber getting hurt kind of just ruined the Rangers? chances altogether because if i remember correctly last offseason people were like yeah i mean the, the rangers they they can make a push for that wild card sure the astros and athletics are there but you know if gallo steps up and you know the veteran frazier does well you know they got lance lynn and now they got Corey kluver i mean that's a dominant one too how do you think you know rangers fans react to i'm not sure like seeing Seeing you know their prized possession of last off season just you know walk away without the Rangers getting anything. So the Rangers, um, if I remember correctly, didn't like they barely gave up anything for Kluber. Um, oh, okay. That's yes. Cool. Oh, Delino de Shields. I remember he. Was yeah, like deal. that. That there was really not much in that deal, and obviously they basically got nothing back from Kluber. But uh, that, they got one game, one inning, one strike. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they can't control the injury, but. Um, I, I'm sure they would have liked to have him stay for another year, year maybe. Well, I, I really yeah. don't think so after trading Lance Lynn and letting Mike Miner walk, because that's that's really why teams uh, or why people thought that they had a chance was because they had a great one, two, three at the top with Lance Lynn, Corey Kluber, and Mike, Mike Miner. yeah, Mike Miner, who was coming off a 200 strikeout season. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't really think the Rangers. Um, obviously, they would have liked him to pitch for them last year, uh, but. I don't think Rangers fans are that upset to see Kluber go, obviously only after pitching one inning. But I think they realize that they're they're not a team that's going to compete. And they're a team that's kind of in the rebuilding stage, which they've kind of been in for a minute now. But I think you're just kind of accepting it at this point with that Lancelin trade and now uh, letting Kluber walk. Yeah, I I do really think that uh, that – the Kluber getting hurt just really ruined their the slightest hope to pull out a playoff appearance. But um, yeah, I mean, so where 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 do you see the Yankees lining up against other teams in the American League now? Do you do you see them as the top dog? Do you see the White Sox giving them a run for their money? What, what do you think? Um, I I think that's a pretty tough question because. I feel like people are kind of, as much as I hate them, people are kind of overlooking the Astros. Um, I don't, I don't know if I see them competing with the White Sox with the loss of Springer and Brantley. I'm, I'm not so sure about how much competing they'll be. Yeah, doing. well, I'm pretty sure they just picked up some bullpen pieces. I'll try and find that yeah, out right now. Picked up Pedro yeah. Baez, but Pedro. Well, Baez, yeah. the, the thing that was promising for them, I remember watching them in the playoffs a lot. They have a lot of solid young young pitchers that stepped up. Oh, yeah. Kyle Tucker's a piece. Yeah, and then you look at their pitchers, Jose Urquidy and Christian Javier. Like, mm, Urquidy stepped up big time. Yeah, so I, I think that – and then uh, getting Verlander back is going to be huge. So I think they're a competitive team. Um, but I it, I don't want to say it's a two-man race between the White Sox and the Yankees. It kind of feels like that, though. Um, you know, I don't want to discount the Rays because they were just in the World Series. But, uh, but they also – lost their two best pitchers yeah uh and you know but the rays are always competitive um that's true so are the athletics yeah so i i think the blue jays you know if they get get enough help in that pitching rotation um with uh nate pearson that that one of their top prospects like who pitched last year um maybe taking over the role as the ace um i i think there's a couple competitive teams like that might be able to surprise some people, but I I really do think it's between the Yankees and the White Sox, and uh, I personally, uh, you know, kind of biasedly, I think the Yankees are a better team than the White Sox right now. Um, yeah, I I mean the, this, what what I have to say to that is, the White Sox have three, possibly four, 
it, you know, if Cease turns, this is a very big stretch, but, you know, if Cease or Kopech turns into a Giolito, the, the White Sox have three, possibly four, dominant starting pitchers. They have a dominant bullpen with rookies like Cody Huer, Evan Marshall, I'm pretty sure he was a rookie this last year, Aaron Bummer, Jace Fry, Liam Hendricks. Um, they have the reigning MVP in Abreu. Moncada said he feels like uh, he did before he had COVID, which he when he was on the uptick. You got Tim Anderson, who is competing for the batting crown this year, won it in 2019. You got an outfield full of Eloy, Luis, Adam Eaton. Hmm. We'll see about that. But then you got Yasmani, Nick Madrigal. The Sox, in my mind, are above the Yankees. Uh, see, see, here's my rebuttal to that is – Right. If the three Yankees starters and now four that we expect to be those kind of elite starters, Garrett Cole, Luis Severino, Domingo Herman, and now Corey Kluber yeah. can all step up and stay healthy. And then you have that bullpen, which I still think is uh, the best in baseball above the Sox uh, with Chapman, Zach Britton. Is Canely still there? Uh, I think Canely left, but they, they still have guys like Adam yeah. Adovino. Um, yeah. You know, Luis Sessa. So, like, the, this is a deep team now, especially with the signing of Kluber, getting LeMahieu back. Um, I think I, they're one of the teams that's still rumored for Bryant, too. So, uh, I, yeah. I, right now, would even before, you know, maybe trading for Bryant, I'd still probably take the Yankees over the uh, White Sox. All right. Well, I, I guess we'll find that out in the playoffs this year. You you got any parting thoughts, Asher? Um, nope. All right. Well, that's going to do this for our tenth episode of Crying in Baseball Baseball Podcast. I've been your host Logan Miele, joined by Ashton Youngfeld. Thanks for listening. Peace. See ya.